Mega Mechatronics. Welcome back to Mega Mechatronics. We are continuing our materials engineering series and we are going to talk about surface finish. The surface of a material is the boundary of that material where it meets another material or it meets uh, the atmosphere, whether it's air or a liquid and oil, all kinds of things. So that is physically uh, how the shape appears um, as it is the boundary of the object. So looking at a part like this, you can, uh, this is an, uh, a CAD model, obviously. You can imagine through the manufacturing processes that you are thinking of using when building the part, you could get a, a sort of an idea of the big surfaces being a uh, shot peen like this, where you would clean it up. And the edges, let's say you cut it out with a CNC plasma cutter, the edges would look something like this or similar depending on the technology if it was a laser cut or or used a uh, plasma jet style of a cutter and uh, here you could see a little bit more complicated system of a linear bearing system you see there's tiny ball bearings and those are highly polished probably plated with a very hard material a very extremely extremely um good surface finish um you can see they almost look chrome they're reflective and those are riding on another very highly polished uh, rail system and some of the other components don't have critical surface finishes but the uh portion where the the bearing the boundary of the balls where they meet the boundary of the rail need to be pretty tight in specification if you want a really smooth rolling and long lasting bearing system that can uh, hold a lot of weight, take shock, things like that. So characteristics of surfaces, uh, first we have the lay and that's the direction of the pattern of the texture of that material of that surface boundary so you could see a couple images there where the one pattern has a sort of laying 90 degrees from each other straight lines and then the sort of milling process uh, there's a lot of chatter marks and things like that and that but you can see uh, they used a rotating tool you can sort of tell and on the other side looks more like a uh, some sort of grinding or polishing system that was not rotating in a circular motion and then we have roughness and these are the micro irregularities so the very small bumps you see in that red line would be something like roughness but then that's combined with waviness and these are the macro irregularities so that's that sort of wave pattern that you can see between the micro irregularities and the macro irregularities and then we have flaws and these are discrete irregularities uh, th this is something that's not in a pattern there is no pattern to these flaws and the flaws could be a uh, defect in the material uh, contamination, tool, tooling marks, something went wrong with the process, um, possibly a tool broke, or, or, and things like that. So these are sort of singularities um, or discrete uh, uh, occurrences. So looking at surface lay, you can see there's actually a couple different surface lays here. One is more of a sort of like a ground surface on the bottom and then you see those really nice lines on that part sitting on top of that uh, table you could see those very straight lines those parallel lines and that's something uh, probably CNC ball milled uh, or something uh, a process like that um, so those are pretty big 
waves and in those waves or within the waves are going to be a, a, a roughness feature. And then looking down here, we have this part uh, with sort of that circular pattern. We would assume that this part was probably a fly cut on a mill or something similar. And then looking at this knife blade, we can probably conclude that this was ground based on those straight and parallel um, sort of random looking marks. If we were to zoom in, we would probably see something like this. So they're not exactly parallel uh, because it was probably done by hand and uh, it, it would be difficult to ensure it is uh, precisely perpendicular to the grounding, grinding system, but you get the idea. And looking at a crankshaft here, you can see the journals are highly polished. And uh, that's actually very important, um, that surface and how you finish that surface, because there is this uh, attribute called fuzz when you polish these crankshaft bearings. And depending on the direction of polish, you're going to actually kind of fold that material over and create this sort of fuzz um, what they call it. So that this picture is a cross section of that, that shiny journal. And it's very, that direction of that, it's very important. So you need to know the direction of the crankshaft, how that's going to operate. And you can see how that is spinning in a clockwise manner and how they, that fuzz is, uh, not, uh, creating any friction or, or excessive, um, sort of like a scraping action so in this way that they have it um, orientated it's going to reduce that scraping action on that bearing uh, increasing the service life so looking at surface roughness which can also be surface texture surface topography um, but we'll say surface roughness, some attributes. This is the, the micro irregularities. And we have our peaks. And you can see even that, that tall peak over there, that, that is a peak as well. And then we have our valleys here uh, for these micro irregularities. So this is probably an important thing that we need to cover when looking at surface finish because this topic goes very deep, as I'll show you later, the, the different types of and uh, parameters uh, or ways of quantifying uh, surface finish. There, there's a lot of different techniques. So looking at the bearing function of a bearing and how surface finish relates is when we're looking at a bearing surface, we want something that's really low friction and really low wear. So you can see in this, this small picture here, that's almost a mirror polish. And from my experience uh, with the GM Atlas engine program, they, it was some pretty awesome technology. I was on the floor there about five years after they launched it, and they had a little display with the uh, i6 lined up there. And to, uh, to demonstrate the their manufacturing capabilities and the design, and in particular the, the finish of that crankshaft, they they assembled a uh, sort of a, a engine block with the crankshaft sitting in there, they put one drop of oil in each journal and then sealed that up as a display and they had a little hand crank on the end of the crankshaft and uh, when you crank that thing, that thing would just spin around. It, it was such low friction and it was sitting there for five years unserviced and that just goes to show uh, the technology they put into it and the, the, the capability and design of that engine and how low friction that was. And that, uh, translates into, uh, better efficiency and more, uh, power potential. And now we're looking at conduction. So conduction of heat. And in this, uh, we need to maximize the surface area. So we need to minimize those peaks and those valleys. And you see in the picture there is a, probably a, a computer heat sink that has been uh, polished extremely uh, to a very fine polish. And you see it's almost like a mirror. That's how uh, smooth that surface is. 
and that's going to improve the heat conduction and reduce the amount of uh, thermal paste uh, you need to use because that thermal paste is not uh, as good of a conductor as the copper or uh, that base material. And um, decoration, and this is a consistent uh, light reflection. So you see here is uh, sort of like a stainless steel. You may have seen this in a nice fancy elevator or something in a hotel, uh, but there are other surface finishes, um, whether it's polished, a shot peen, sort of dull look, um, and, and things like that you need to consider. Even with uh, non-metal materials, that's very important with plastics and things like that. Adhesion. So you see uh, uh, someone here is uh, repainting their car, and he's going over it with a, a Scotch-Brite pad, and he's roughing that surface uh, of that, that base uh, material, or that old paint. He's going to have to rough that up because... Uh, the surface is, is too smooth uh, to ensure maximum adhesion of the new layers of uh, paint that he's going to apply to the vehicle. So uh, that roughness is sort of acting like an anchor for that new coating, uh, that paint coating he's putting on there. And friction. What we want the surface finish to look like is to have sharp peaks and lower contact area. So in our little example here, we have uh, a performance clutch plate that has been sintered. Uh, it started off as a metallic powder that was baked. And you see that surface is actually pretty rough. And um, that's going to create sharp peaks, those little granules of metal that went into the sintering process. And those peaks lower the contact area. In addition, they, quad, they, they created these quadrants to further reduce that contact area and increase the, um, the pressure that th this particular plate can produce. Uh, and obviously this was for high performance applications. And um, sealing. And this is also important, the contact area and we want a low wearing surface so typically it's going to be a smooth surface and you can see here is a uh, little overview of a rear main seal on a crankshaft of a vehicle and some ways that leaks happen you can see uh, a groove wore into it and that's pretty normal and you can actually repair that by getting a repair sleeve that you install over that with a slightly um, oversized uh, rear main seal and you can fix that up I've done that before and th in the middle there is pressure distortion from improperly torquing the flex plate um, to the crankshaft or the flywheel and that can actually cause distortions which will cause um, uh, leaks in areas where uh, when that crankshaft is spinning the the rubber seal um, is not flexible enough to close those gaps um, just from the the inertia of the seal being open and closed so quickly and then obviously cracks can cause leaks so looking at these parameters you see there are so many parameters and uh, I believe there are more parameters than this uh, the popular ones you probably heard are, are RA and RZ, uh, but we're not going to get too deep into this, so don't, don't worry about it. So we can visually do a pretty good job by visually indicating surface finish. So let's look at these blower bonnets, and you can tell on the, the top one here is sort of, it's, it's kind of shiny. It's not rough, but it is a little dull. So we can sort of assume that um, it's not exactly rough, but sort of in between uh, the peaks and valleys are smoothed out. So maybe something like in, in D there, delta D. Uh, but then we have this very highly polished one, and these are both aluminum. And you see that this, this polished surface, that mirror finish is very, very smooth. Something like you'd see in that F uh, image there. So how do they measure surface finish if you don't have an uh, electron microscope? 
Well, the it's based on a stylus system. So the stylus is going transversing across the surface, pu- getting pulled across the surface, and that stylus is hooked to a very, very sensitive uh, measuring device that will measure the peaks and valleys uh, as that moves across and plot that out for you. And a lot of these will do all the math for you and averaging to give you those uh, output, those parameters. So you can see um, in these that stylus is being uh, pushed or pulled across, and that stylus is going to move up and down. If you would imagine the device, the drive unit is uh, static or stable and not moving. Same with the cross section or the the material, and the stylus is going to move across and move up and down, and that's what we are measuring. So what a measurement would look like is something like this. So up at the top, if you can visualize, it's a section of a part, a 3D section. But what we are measuring with the uh, stylus is a two-dimensional section of that three-dimensional piece. And you see that flaw there. Um, That would be uh, like a discrete uh, irregularity. So there's only one of these in this part, possibly. And that could be from someone dropping something on it uh, and crushing that down uh, or something like that. So if we look at the total profile, this includes, uh, this is basically the raw output of that. So you could sort of match up the peaks and valleys from the three-dimensional part down to the profile. And from that, we can derive the waviness profile. So we are it's filtering. We are filtering out the roughness or those micro irregularities and we are looking at the waviness and we can also filter out the waviness and give us a uh, attenuated uh, roughness profile that removes that waviness so it sort of gives us gives us a uh, average uh, median line and we can line that up and get a a better idea of the max and min of the peaks and valleys of that roughness profile And you can also do a really good job using just your fingers. Your fingers are extremely sensitive, and uh, unfortunately some blind people have... um, Unfortunately people are blind and have to deal with this, but they have adapted uh, quite well. So someone who has enhanced their, their senses can actually feel houses and cars. If this were to scale... If that earth was to scale, uh, some people will actually be able to feel um, a car if they rub their finger across there. Um, Or let's say we put a car on a perfect sphere of this size and the car is to scale with this, that person could actually find that vehicle uh, just by using their finger. Well, that concludes our video on surface finish. Uh, Thank you so much for watching and if you liked what you saw please like the video and if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe. Thank you.